The game of basketball has brought many people into my life, and the person I'm chatting with today is no exception to that. First, as a player, and now more as a younger brother. I first met Max Kamenko near the end of his grade 8 school year, and it was a mutual love of basketball and an opportunity for extra work that began that relationship. This continued all the way through grade 10, which was just hours upon hours spent both in the gym as well as in the car rides afterwards, uh, driving him home. Then Max made a decision. He wouldn't be playing varsity basketball. In his words, he wanted to go full throttle with something that he loved, and that thing was no longer basketball, but content creation as both a photographer and a videographer. He's begun to make a name for himself in the community for this, and I'm, I'm extremely proud of the young man he is becoming. It's hard to imagine that he's graduating from high school this year, and when I look at him now compared to the, the goofy kid that I first met all those years ago. This was a great conversation. It was great to catch up with him, and I hope you guys enjoyed it as well. And here is a conversation with Max Kamenko. I am now joined with the young prince of media of Winnipeg, Max Kamenko. Max, how are you? I'm good, man. How are you? I'm doing well. And the uh, these last couple of days of conversations, I've talked to different people. And one of the things that struck out to me with my co conversation with Denzel is how long I've known him. And we're reaching a point where we've known each other for quite a long time. Um, I think it was the spring of your grade eight year, correct? Yeah, yeah. Spring of grade eight. I remember it was sometime in May. We started working out together. And, and then, yeah, it just got consistent from there. And yeah. Um, I remember every like people would always ask I think I think I'm sure you got this a lot too but people would always ask me like why are you like close with Matt mm -hmm. well I'm just trying to work out <laughs> yeah yeah and that, I guess that's that was that's how our relationship started was just the was just player coach um yeah which, and to me it's wild to think that you're graduating this year um just makes me yeah. <laughs> makes me feel old um, what do you remember from those first, those first number of sessions? I know there's a story we've talked about a little bit, but, um, what's that? Like, yeah, I, I remember, um, kind of just being really eager to like, at that time, my headspace was fully basketball. Like mm -hmm. that was completely what, what I wanted to do. And, and that, that's what I filled my time with. Right. So that that's kind of why we started spending you know so much time together and, and I think that I remember one of the first things you told me it was one of our first workouts and you're like like what are you what are you trying to do with basketball and like no one had really like just out up front you know asked me that before um and like I had you know kind of made it known that I wanted to pursue basketball just I you know it, it's different when someone actually just really says it to you and you actually absorb like what do I want to do with it? and I told you I said I want to go pro and then that was it was right after a workout that we just finished and you said is that workout like, would a guy like Jared who who's a pro here would a guy like Jared work out like that I, I didn't I don't even think I answered I think I just um I just shook my head because I, I knew it, it wasn't um so honestly, like, I don't remember too many specifics from, from kind of like the first ones, but I kind of just remember the, the more crucial stuff that, that like gave me like a, a wake up call in a sense. And that, like, that was one of the things where it was like from that moment on, maybe not every workout, but after a lot, a lot more consistently, I'd ask myself during workouts, um, after a workout, I'd always ask myself and say, is that how a pro would have trained? Mm um so yeah like just already that work work ethic instilled that that is yeah that's a story that definitely stands out to me and because yeah. I remember you answered that you wanted to be a pro and I remember I basically started laughing um, yeah <laughs> when, I, when I've told that story to people it wasn't the fact that um that the dream itself was I was yeah. laughing at the dream yeah no it wasn't that at all no, uh, just the, it was just the fact that, and yeah. and, and this it's why I got into coaching the way I did was, you just didn't know what it took. Yeah, no, exactly, and and I I still remember even at that point, and I guess it comes from my personality now. Like even now, when when I tell people you know what I want to do or what I want to accomplish, I 
some people kind of like play it off and yeah like oh yeah like that's that's hilarious that you want to do that or that seems like kind of outreach but even at that point like you were fully serious with me and you said like yeah I think you can do it um I think you can play pro but like this is what it's going to take right yeah yeah and I know uh I know one of the, the points of comparison that we had was obviously like Simon was is your age and was on your team. And I think one thing I remember I remember saying yeah. was, or you said to me, was like, oh, I work harder than Simon does. Which at the time, like, very, <laughs> well, very well could have been true. And I just remember like saying to you, like for every hour that he puts in, you have to put in six. Yeah, yeah. And exactly. that was and that was just because again, when I was a player, I had that experience of like I'm working hard, I'm working hard without the real yeah. like no someone didn't just kind of kick me in the ass saying, like, yeah, you were working hard, but guess what? You're harder need like you're what you think is working hard has to be way yeah. beyond that. Yeah, exactly. Um, so obviously the no basketball this year, and I think there would have been, I think based on conversations, you still would have would have played. But you went through a process of kind of maybe falling out of love with the game. Um, situations happened that occurred, and then finding a new passion. You want to tell me a little bit about that story and what that process was like for you? Yeah. So, you know, it all started with, you know, shifting my disc and having a five and a half, six, one, three rehabilitation process. And like that was, you know, I started off not even being able to get off, off the court when it happened. And then, mm. And then just multiple months of just like rehab and, and physio and all of that to, to help me get better. But during that point, it was honestly such a, such a weird point in my life, just because of, you know, at that point I couldn't play basketball and I still wanted to, but I was also growing an interest in photography, like right up as that was happening. Mm. Um, and then I ended up just like, I wasn't good at it when I first started with photography whatsoever or video but I had such an interest in it and, and I was always like intrigued and it just felt like that was the most convenient thing to take my mind off of, you know, not being able to play basketball and not being around, around my teammates, mm. like as often as I was. So then, yeah, I ended up kind of just focusing and taking all my time that was spent on basketball and transitioning it into photography and, and video and you know now it's paid off but I, for a few months there that was a really kind of weird time just because I was also shifting through kind of friend groups too and mm -hmm. you know at, in, during high school that's that's always just a, a weird thing to go through yeah yeah so overall yeah and I I didn't really I wouldn't I, I was pretty um I, I kept to myself during during this time uh, mainly and and yeah, that being said, I kind of just drifted and isolated myself away from everyone, which, which honestly I don't regret because I think during that time I learned a lot. Um, and, you know, maybe it didn't work out in the best way, but isolate myself from, you know, just all the other noise and, and distractions um, allowed me to, to realize that I wanted to, to pursue video and photo. And, and out of that decision, I've kind of just, went full throttle with it what was the uh what was your thought process and the 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 things that you had to think about when you eventually as of almost about a year ago now uh you met me at tim hortons and said yo coach like i'm not playing basketball next year yeah um i think that at that time it was because that 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 was the time where i was even during my grade 10 year i was i was still thinking about playing cis mm -hmm. um and then that was right at around the, my, that was right around the start of grade 11. So I ended up realizing like, I, I just don't love basketball. Um, and I absolutely love, I, I still, you know, enjoyed playing basketball and, mm -hmm. and enjoyed working out. I, you know, did it the other night, mm -hmm. but I just wanted to, like, I absolutely have such a passion for, for creating content and, and photos and, and videos that, that completely like overtook my life. Mm. And, you know, some people can view that as, as a negative because, you know, my life had no balance whatsoever. But when I say I went full throttle in it, I, I legitimately did. Yeah. And I don't regret that whatsoever. 
And I think it was also at a time where I still just wasn't um, just over a few different like situations with, with um, whether it be like teammates or, or just high school, just in high school, yeah. high school, what high school has was, was tough for me at certain parts. And during that part, I, I still wasn't fully, um, you know, understanding of, of different situations. And I was still confused over a lot. So it felt like just having my life kind of go full throttle and something that felt clear to me. It mm-hmm. felt like that was a, that was what I wanted to do. And, and it just seemed like the right move. And, and yeah, it, it, it is paying off so far, which is great. Oh, absolutely. What I was like, and I still am um, taken aback, I guess it would be the, what is the right word was the maturity and the, uh, the courage that it took um, for you to, to tell me that because, and I, I, I made myself, you know, clear that like at the time I was really happy for you finding what, doing what you love. Um, but you also knew like me selfishly as a coach, I was expecting you to be a starting member of my backcourt. Yeah. Um, yeah. And like, did, did that come into, come into your thought process at all? Um, not specifically like that. And initially, honestly, I was initially like my decision was, you know, already set. And then I kind of realized I was like, I should give a little more thought to, to, you know, my coaches and my teammates and stuff like that. Um, and that's why I did, you know, have conversation, like I had my conversation with you with some teammates that I wasn't going to play. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I think that at that time it was, it was a matter of having a conversation about that and, and figuring that out rather than, you know, making it a big deal mm. and, and it up. Cause like I said, I still did want to want to be a little isolated during that time and, and keep more to myself a little bit. So um, I think the way that, you know, that situation was kind of handled and, and brought about with me just deciding not to play and how I handled it. I, I think I was, was good and, and mature about that. Um, I just, you know, obviously it was something that was tough in the sense that it's like, I've spent so many years of my life dedicated to this sport and to my teammates and and guys that I I grew up with and leaving that was, was tough. And, and even throughout the season, I, I I don't regret not playing Mm -hmm. grade 11, but I was like, damn, I like, wish I played, you know, one game and I ended up playing it at Garden City and I always, they're, yeah, their um, their varsity coach and stuff like that. So I ended up like getting that off of my bucket list. So that kind of was a little crazy how that happened. But um, it must it must have felt good that day when uh, you were hanging around the bleachers and people were like they saw you and were all fired up to see you in the gym again. Yeah, that was funny because like so many people were like, I haven't seen you like pick up a ball in a minute, and I said, yeah, <laughs> I I actually remember um as because you called me that day like. 15 minutes before the game started. 15 minutes before tip off. <laughs> yeah. So I'm like, all right. Yeah. I was supposed to be on set and I called my, my director and I was like, I, I can't make it today. Um, Cause at that time I was like, I gotta, I gotta prioritize playing against garden city. Cause that had always been like a, a dream of mine in high school, like to play against their varsity team. Yeah. And uh, you know, we ended up getting, Oh, we got smacked. Yeah. <laughs> But it was funny because I, I remember running into the gym like as the warm up buzzer rang to to like start the game, and some guys like, "Hey man, you're a little late." <laughs> and I just remember thinking to myself, "I'm like, nah, man, I'm right on I'm time." I'm right on time. <laughs> well, I'm at, like my my I called you and you asked I asked what you're doing, and you're like, "Oh, I'm about to go on set," and I was like, "I would not be calling you if you like, you know I would not call you unless I was absolutely desperate." But we had five guys. We had one starter playing um and like we ended up losing i think by 60 and like you were like in you were you were ineligible to play so it was but i I talked to garden city's coach it was fine um but if you had not played we would have lost like 120 (laughs) yeah because it's tough with with some teams like like that they they are always competitive throughout the entire game and garden cities would have definitely been like would have been tough. Like they, they played their starters. Um, and so like five minutes left in the fourth quarter. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I, I remember I was so gassed after the first, 
first quarter. I, I couldn't even feel my legs, but I, <laughs> I, I remember I, I, I had that one Kobe shot where I like did a well, few, yeah. two or three pump fakes, man. Like my defender must've got pissed off, <laughs> but I did like two or three pump fakes and like, just like banked it in. And <laughs> yeah, I, I, my, I, I would say my thing was, was uh contested twos though. That was my strong suit. <laughs> A strong suit might be a strong word for for that. It was my preference. It was my. Oh, there we go. <laughs> um, trans. So now you like transitioning into basically full time content creation. Um, in a lot of ways, it's an individual pursuit. But as like, if anyone who follows your your you on social media, or not, you're very much part of a team. Um, so what has that environment, that team environment, brought to you as a creator? Um, in terms of your process and your output and whatnot. Yeah, so something that um, – and, and this is what I so, – something that I've learned from the process of, like, from going through high school and going through, you know, different friend groups and, and you know, just different experiences. And I've learned to not force my way into, you know, a friendship or a friend group. Mm, yeah, yeah. Like that. And with um, kind of the group I'm in now, it's all like-minded individuals, whether it be – um, musicians or artists or or photographers or models or whoever it be um, like we have a group or I mean you know several different groups that are based off of creative people just wanting to completely you know pursue their passions and and kind of go full throttle with it which is you know the same mentality and and mindset that I have so I just tried to initially uh, surround myself with with people who who are like minded with me, and everything kind of just fell into place and and uh, naturally just worked itself out. And I, you know, I'm a part of several different friend groups now that are like I'm a part of Kid Foster's, one of the artists I work with, and um, like we have a we have a little group going right now, and and I always like to kind of work work my way up to success, like with the people that are surrounding me, you know, at this time, I don't like to have new people come into my circle at diff- like all the time and mm. I like having, you know, the same main group of people around me and, you know, having the opportunities to be on and a part of, you know, different teams and friend groups and all that is, is um, amazing because I just have so many other like-minded individuals who, who want to do the same thing as me, which is perfect so you you continue to amaze me by how clearly and precisely you can think through your thoughts and um the level of maturity that you uh that you possess so that is something i always enjoy um seeing in you because it's not something that i think that it's something that has been cultivated over the last number of years uh hasn't necessarily been there since i first met you yeah and um no definitely and it's definitely um i i believe that you're like the five people that you surround yourself mm. with the yep. most right and i happen to surround myself with with creatives who are all happen to be like in their 20s and just in different phases of life so i've adapted to to maturity levels as well as just how i you know talk and have conversations with people and um yeah so i ended up just really just in the jackpot with kind of the the friend groups that I'm in just because they they push me to be a better person um with photo with video and just a better better person in general which is great um because I definitely used to be uh I still am I still do a lot of stupid stuff but well, uh, that that is again if if you thinking that your glow up situation is an understatement you say that you do stupid stuff is in an even bigger <laughs> <laughs> yeah understatement. And, that's something I'm, like I'm always gonna gonna just do stupid stuff. <laughs> um, I I find I get a kick out of it, <laughs> but like I'll I'll be like 80 years old and like pulling pranks on like the people that give me my prescription drugs at like shop. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> but um, no, it's I I think I've it's just been I was I was kind of thrown into not thrown I put myself into a business environment and and with that I had to really learn professionalism and and maturity at like a really quick pace um Mm. compared to you know most people my age 
um, which has been which has been great. Um, but it also is a little weird because you know sometimes at school and stuff I don't really relate to people the best, um, yeah. which is all good. Um, you know, people have different interests and stuff, and I I just happen to kind of find my interests and stay more so in in that area. But yeah. yeah. We're going to be wrapping this up and I asked you to prepare. So hopefully that you have some stuff that comes to your mind. Um, but as a content creator who looks through things through a more, maybe more critical lens than the average person, um, I just asked you for three pieces of content uh, and it can be any kind of style of content that people should watch, listen, consume in general. So what are your three, your three picks? For, for kind of content that people should watch, like of mine? Or just content of people that either you, that you've put out or that people that you consume, um, whether it's music, uh, oh, videography, okay, cool. okay. Uh, a photographer that does cool stuff. Okay, cool. Yeah. I read the question Ron, when you sent it. Okay. Um, but yeah, I think that, you know, personal development is, is something that is, is, should be key to everyone. Like I always try to, to better myself individually and first off as a person, before I try to better myself, you know, um, in business and, and photography. So um, a guy that who's, you know, um, kind of like not rules, but um, like Jordan Peterson, his, his uh, book, 12, the 12 rules to, to life. Oh, really. That book was, yeah. Yeah. And um, he just has a lot of great, uh, great guidelines and, and things to say that I have, I've picked up on and, and, you know, noted from, and, you know, maybe I don't agree with all the things he says, but, he does have a lot of knowledge that is, um, that is, is, you know, relevant, um, in yep. today's society. And then, uh, I got to shout out my boy, Garrett McEwen, cause he's always putting out great content. So, uh, yeah, he's someone to watch. And then last person I think people should be watching is me. <laughs> hey, bet on yourself, kid. You know, some good content. So, uh, I'd, I'd give that a, a check out. <laughs> and obviously you're, you're going to, you're going to be tagged in this. Um, I think you saw it, but Sam gave you a shout out on my yeah, conversation yeah, with him. Um, yeah, I, uh, I watched your, your conversation with Sam and that, that was, that was great. I, I like the, the points he touched on and like that, that guy has done some crazy stuff from going from a janitor and mm. to, to literally, he said it in the, in the conversation of literally just living his dream now, which is great. Yeah. And um, I'm just, yeah, I'm pumped about all the, all the work that he's put in and it's, it's helped me kind of realize you know what it what it does take to to be on that level or for something like content creation yeah well i'm gonna let you go kid i've yeah, appreciated so. uh i've appreciated our relationship over the last number of years and i look forward to the kind of the next chapter it gets to take uh over the next hopefully five ten years down the road yeah yeah for sure man awesome i appreciate it all all right dude have a great rest of the day yeah bye